he stumbled on a tree root. They had to scrape most of them together with a shovel. Best thing for you is to be gone while your friends still think you are dead. None of our people will try to stop you. As the novel draws towards its close, what Conrad called his technical intention becomes clearer. He described the secret agent as a new departure in genre, involving a sustained, ironical treatment of a melodramatic and sensational subject. Conrad always maintained that he deliberately formulated an ironic method that would enable me to say everything I had to say in scorn as well as in pity. Conrad's scorn serves, of course, to distance the reader and illuminates the central theme of the book. Above all, the secret agent is about deception, the secrecy and the systematized lack of communication evident in all strata of society. Conrad's careful use of a non-linear narrative, he delays, for example, the revelation of Stevie's horrible death, reinforces the ways in which the characters are blind to each other's motives. So intricate is Conrad's design, so subtle are his thematic interconnections, that a simple lack of communication between a husband and a wife becomes symptomatic of the fetishistic worship of secrecy at the heart of English society. In 1896, Conrad had married Jessie George and settled into a domestic, if itinerant, life in various parts of the home counties. Though he formed strong literary friendships with the writers H.G. Wells and John Galsworthy, he remained a mystery to them and to others who witnessed his recurring depression and ill health. His wife and two children were also constantly unwell, and this unhealthy family atmosphere became so overwhelmingly oppressive that it undoubtedly contributed to the depiction of claustrophobic and taciturn domesticity in the secret agent, and to Conrad's fascination with the mismanagement and lack of proper communication at all levels of society. So it is that Winnie's belief that life does not bear too much looking into is matched by the Home Secretary's busy request, spare me the details. Sir Jacob Well, what is it you found out already? You came upon something unexpected on the first step? Not exactly unexpected, Sir Ethelred. What I came upon was a psychological state. Mm. You must be lucid, please. Only spare me the details, Sir Ethelred. You no doubt know that most criminals, at some time or other, feel an irresistible need of confessing. Mm. In Verloc, I have found a man in that particular psychological state. Mm. It was enough on my part to whisper to him. I know that you are at the bottom of this affair. There remained for me only to ask who put you up to it. He replied with remarkable emphasis. Mm -hmm. I gather the fellow with the bomb was his brother-in-law. It is rather a curious affair. <clears throat> All this seems very fantastic. Doesn't it? One would think it a ferocious joke, but our man took it seriously, it appeared. He felt himself threatened, I imagine lost his head. My impression is that he thought those embassy people capable not only of throwing him out, but of giving him away too, in some manner or other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though how he could hope to have his share in this business concealed is more than I can tell. <laughs> what have you done with him? Let him go, Sir Ethelred. Hmm? I left him with his wife in the shop. Oh. I'll speak to the Attorney General tonight. <clears throat> You say this man had a wife? Uh, yes, sir, a genuine wife. Uh, and a genuinely respectable marital relation. From a certain point of view, we are here in the presence of a domestic drama. Uh, <laughs> uh.